Hi, welcome to the 8.13 version of the IBM Spectrum Protect Operations Center. In this demo, I'm going to show you how you can create schedules to update one or more backup archive clients. As new packages are released, they can be automatically downloaded to the hub server. And when the update schedule runs, installation files are copied to the Spectrum Protect client systems and the client is updated to the requested version. You can also use the Operations Center to monitor, cancel, or reschedule updates. I'm going to be showing you how to set this up with a hub and spoke server in the Operations Center. The reason for this is that the hub server is able to download the updates for the clients from the website and then share those with the spoke servers in a similar fashion to replication. In this small test environment, the hub server only has one client, a Linux at 713, and the spoke server also only has one client, a Windows client at version 8.1. In order to be eligible for updates, the backup archive clients must be at least at 6.4.3, have password access equal generate, and have the client scheduler running. To get started with the update process, click on the update link on the top bar. The first time you click on this, it'll take you to this page and you need to click on the settings link in order to turn on automatic client updates. If you want to enable client updates, you'll want to slide this bar to enable the client updates. Next, you'll need to provide a directory on the hub server. This is where we will download the updates to and then from there, we're going to import them into the Spectrum Protect Hub server. This directory is called our deploy repository. It needs to be 40 gigabytes in size and writable by the server instance. Underneath the covers, the Spectrum Protect server will automatically create a device class and storage pool utilizing this directory. The hub server will automatically import into this new storage pool the update files it had downloaded from the IBM maintenance website. Next, you need to decide how many different versions of the various update packages you want to keep. Either you can keep the most recent only, you can keep two of them, three of them, or the default, which is four. Now remember, there will be an update package for each of the different platforms. So for instance, a Windows, a Linux, an AIX, and so forth. Go ahead and click Save. Now in this case, we will have a failure. And the reason is, is that we provided a directory that's actually being utilized by a directory container. And thus it failed. When you choose a directory, it needs to be a directory that's not in use by any of the other Spectrum Protect databases, logs, or directory container pools. So let's go ahead and enter a new directory name. And we'll hit save again. Once the client updates have been enabled, the Spectrum Protect Hub server will go out to the IBM website and download the needed deploy manager and client upgrade packages. It'll only pull down the packages that are required because we have those clients and those versions might be needed to upgrade to. The hub server needs to be able to access this website. If it fails to access the website, it will try again in 24 hours. In fact, this update process occurs every 24 hours. And each time we connect, we will compare it to a manifest that we keep in the Spectrum Protect database that tells which versions we already have inside the download pool and which versions we might need for the specific platforms. Once the needed deploy manager or client upgrade packages have been automatically downloaded to the deploy repository, we will import them into the hub server's new storage pool. And then the hub server will replicate the needed packages over to the spoke servers. The spoke servers will be utilizing a archive copy destination and they'll pick the one that has the most free space and it needs at least 10 gigabyte of free space on that spoke server in order to receive these replicated deploy manager and client upgrade packages. Here in the hub server's completed task, you'll see the import nodes where we're actually bringing in the different packages. And you'll also see the completed replicate node. So for instance, here we have the completed 7.1.8 Linux import. And over here we have the 8.1.2 Linux import. And then on this next one, we have the Windows 8.1.2 import of that client update. 
And if we click on the replicate node, we'll see where the hub server replicated over these packages to the spoke servers. If you go into the clients field, you'll see two new clients showing up. One is the IBM deploy client for Unix, and one is the IBM deploy client for Windows. And these are utilized to do the replication and the deploy. Next, click on updates and then clients, and that will show us the current versions of clients installed and the updates for those clients that are available. So for instance here, the 7.1 version has one installed client, that was our Linux 7.1.3, and we have one candidate that could be upgraded to version 7.1.8, which would be the next version 7 client. We don't have any version 6.4.3 and earlier clients, and for version 8.1, we have one 8.1 client installed, that was our Windows, but we have two candidates. That would be both our Linux 7.1.3 as well as our Windows 8.1.0 could be updated. So when we go to schedule the update, we can choose to schedule both of them or just one of them. One of the first things to look at is this last schedule start time. This is when those clients backup kicks off. And the reason that's important is we want to schedule the update to occur after the backup finishes. You'll specify the time that the update should start. And so we'll kick off that schedule. And if a backup's still running, we will queue that schedule for two hours before we consider that schedule missed. You can do sorts or filters on this list of scheduled clients. For instance, if you wanted to filter by the last scheduled start time, that will help you choose which client you want to include in a specific schedule. When you create this schedule, you can choose either a single client or you can choose multiple clients to be included in the scheduled update. If I switch over to another Spectrum Protect server that has a lot of clients being scheduled for updates, I can easily show you how you can utilize a control click to choose one client versus a shift click to choose multiple consecutive clients. Okay, back on our small test machine. We are now going to choose both the Windows and Linux to be upgraded to version 8.1.2. We'll go ahead and click the Next button. We'll specify a schedule date for the schedule to start on. We'll then specify a schedule time, and this is when the schedule will kick off. Remember, this needs to be after the backup has completed, and we do have a two-hour grace period where we will queue the update schedule if the backup is still running. But after that, we will mark the update as missed. Go ahead and click Next. On the next page, notice the warning about the updates can affect the future client operations. This is because the updates are uninstalling and then reinstalling the code. You do not want a client to get automatic updates. Then you can set in the client option file the auto deploy no. Or if you are afraid of reboots, you can do the auto deploy no reboot option in the client options file. So we'll go ahead and click I understand and click schedule updates. An individual schedule is created for each client that is going to be updated. So it might take a while to create all of these schedules if you have hundreds and hundreds of clients needing updated. Click on the close and view schedule button. On this page, you'll see the two schedules that were created for our two clients, both the Linux and the Windows. You'll see the version that those clients are currently at and the version that they are targeted to be upgraded to. In this case, 812 is the target for both those clients. We can also see that the status is currently scheduled. You'll see in the top of this screen that it shows us how many schedules have failed, how many needs to reboot, how many have succeeded, and for us, how many are currently scheduled, which is two. We do have a couple other options on this page. One of those options is the reschedule button. It is currently grayed out, and that's because you can only reschedule a failed schedule. Now we also have a cancel update button. So for instance, if we wanted to cancel this Windows update and we clicked on that, when you cancel the update, that schedule will actually be deleted. So once we refresh the screen, you'll see that we now only have our Linux schedule. In order to reschedule that Windows client, we need to go back into updates. Notice this time we only have one candidate because the Linux is still scheduled. 
So we'll go ahead and click Schedule Update. We'll choose that Windows client. We'll go ahead and click Next. We'll give it a scheduled date and a scheduled time to start. And we'll go ahead and click Next. We'll click I understand. We'll reschedule that Windows client. Once we reload that page, we'll see the new Windows schedule and we'll see that the Linux, for some reason, has either failed or missed its schedule. For a failed or missed schedule, you can click the reschedule button and that will take you to the same screen we just saw for the rescheduling of the deleted schedule. So we'll go ahead and choose a date and a time and click on reschedule. I've showed you how to cancel a schedule and how to reschedule a schedule. We'll come back and take a look once these start running. The Windows schedule has been running and it just succeeded. You can now see that the version has been updated to version 8120, which is same as the target version that we'd hoped to update it to. So that has completed successfully. One thing to notice, when a update schedule kicks off and is in the running status, if you go into the clients, you'll see that that client's platform is changed to Deploy Manager. So this shows that the update is in process. Back under the updates, we can see that the Linux is running and it'll complete here in a second. And then we'll have two updates which have succeeded. Switching back to the other server, one thing to notice is that after 15 days, the Spectrum Protect server will automatically prune off and expire from the Deploy Repository archive storage pool. Any of the update packages that are no longer needed. And another thing, after the schedules have run, we will only keep them 14 days and then we'll delete those. So you might want to click on this icon here and export them to an Excel spreadsheet so that you do have a history of what was updated. There are a couple things you need to set up before you start utilizing the automatic client deployment. The first is if you are using an operation center for both hubs and spoke servers, you need to make sure that your hub and your spoke servers each have each other's server definitions. So you can check this with the query server command. And if, for instance, the hub is not defined to the spoke, you can rectify that with the define server command. You also need to make sure that they've exchanged the SSL 1.2 certificates. And the easiest way to do this is with the ping command. Even if you just have one Spectrum Protect server, you need to make sure that you have set your REST HTTP port. And this REST API is utilized to manage the operations for the OC's client deployment process. So by default, that needs to be set to 8443, but you can customize that. Okay, let's go ahead and I'll walk you through how to verify that the servers can talk with each other. If you want the hub server to be able to share the packages that it downloads for updates with the spoke servers, not only do you have to define the spoke servers, but you also have to make sure that the spoke server has the definition for the hub servers. In order to verify these connections, from the hub server issue a query server, and you should be able to see the definitions for the spoke servers. Then, from the spoke servers, issue the query server. In this case, we do not see the definitions for the hub server. The plus spoke wizard inside of the operations center does not define the hub server to the spoke server, nor does it exchange the security certificates that are necessary for the spoke server to contact the hub server. From the spoke server, we need to define the hub server using the define server command. Now the query server issued from the spoke server will show us the hub server definitions. And then secondly, we want to make sure that all of the certificates for SSL 1.2 have been exchanged. So we're going to issue this ping server and we're going to ping the spoke server from the hub server and this will exchange certificates. So in summary, version 8.1.3 Operation Center gives you the ability to create schedules to automatically update one or more backup archive clients. As new packages are released, they are automatically downloaded to the Operation Center. And when the update schedule runs, installation files are copied to the client systems and the clients are automatically updated to the specific version. You can also use the Operation Center to monitor, cancel, or reschedule updates. Thank you.